pleasure representing Shannon Ruth, who goes by the nickname Shay. This morning, we filed a civil lawsuit against Nick Carter of the Backstreet Boys. The lawsuit alleges that Carter physically assaulted and raped my client, Shay, who you will meet and hear from in a moment. But first, let me tell you what happened. Shay attended a Backstreet Boys concert in February of 2001 in Tacoma, Washington. She was 17 years old at the time. When the concert ended, Shay joined the autograph line where she met Nick Carter. He invited her to join him on the tour bus. And once they were inside the bus, he gave her a funny tasting beverage that he called VIP juice. Hello, my name is Shay, and I'm 39 years old. And the last 21 years have been filled with pain, confusion, frustration, shame, and self-harm that are a direct result of Nick Carter raping me. <laughs> Even though I'm autistic and live with cerebral palsy, I believe that nothing has affected me more or had a more lasting impact on my life than what Nick Carter did and said to me. Sorry. After he raped me, I remember him calling me and grabbing me and leaving bruises on my arm. Sorry. Okay. Nothing to be sorry about, okay? I'd also like to say that Carter tried to scare me into silence by saying no one would believe me if I told what happened. He was nasty and threatening, saying I would go to jail if I told. He also said he'd turn people against me because he was Nick Carter and he had the power to wreck my life. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News. See, my thing is, I don't buy it, right? That, you know, that woman was up there sniffling and everything else, and she remembered quickly to have her attorney get her a Kleenex she knew she was on camera. Come on. She said, I have cerebral, th cerebral palsy and uh, autism, right? And she's had to live with these diseases. But the worst thing was Nick. Well, what she did with the cerebral palsy and the autism, and she got treatment for that. As soon as she realized that she had that, she got treatment for that. There's treatment that you get for that. Why you wait 21 years to get treatment for what you accuse Nick of doing? No tears. Just jumping on a bandwagon. I don't buy it. Sorry. I buy it when it traumatizes them to the point that they have to tell somebody and get some kind of treatment. Yeah, she come right out and said she had epilepsy and autism. She didn't have any problem saying that. All right? God bless her for that. But she said the worst thing was living with what Nick did to her. I am not buying it. Ridiculous. Dale is the lead. He's also a real good attorney, but he's letting this female speak because she's vicious.
I don't believe any of this. This is this guy is not Nick Carter is not a Danny Masterson. Now Danny Masterson, I, I he was charged and he was convicted, and I believe that he did what he did. But see, this one Schumann came out with these false claims, right? And then now you got all these other ones jumping on. Trust me, I got into this very deeply. I'm going to do a video about the James Hartline guy, who was her crazy pastor, who actually lived with Melissa and Jerry Schumer for a while. Right? And he was viciously nasty to anyone who spoke up for Nick. And a few years ago, I was very vocal about that. I made some His Side 2 videos because I just simply don't believe the man did the stuff. Right? And this Hartline guy came after me hard. But look up James Hartline, the Reverend James Hartline, right? Even now, he was so he was sipping for her so hard that he would just get violent. He got arrested a couple times over messing with people. But now he's not on Schumann's side. He's not on her side. So he backed away from her. It's a, in, in my opinion, it's her father, Jerry, that is. I, Leading her, you know, this is she's going to try and get sympathy fame, and I just don't. I I personally believe that when someone is sexually assaulted, male or female, that if it affects them as bad as these people are saying, they report it and they don't give up. You don't go do a duet with them. You don't wait twenty one years later to reiterate it after it's been denied. This man just does not seem, you know, he's got no reason to be a sexual predator. If he was a sexual predator, right, let's say before he got famous, he was a sexual predator, and then he's famous. He's in the best position in the world to be a sexual predator. Because if he says, hey, well, maybe you should come on up to the ho uh, hotel room, and she says no, then he just turns to the next one and says, hey, why don't you come up to the hotel room? And if they say no, he just turns to the next one. He doesn't have to force himself on anybody, especially no offense to that woman. But Nick Carter doesn't have to settle. If he gets to messing with some girl, she says, no, he can say, okay, and it's called another one. I don't believe these allegations because they waited for so long, and I see these others jumping on the bandwagon. His side, too. And I don't mean to disrespect any true rape victim or someone that's been molested by a male or a female, but in my experience, when it happens, what I've seen, when it's truthful, they come right out and say it. They don't wait until other people speak up. So I'm going to be following the, the Nick Carter case. I just don't believe these women, you know. Now, Danny Masters is different. You know, I knew he was going to get it. Danny Masterson, he, he deserves what he got. He seems like the arrogant type like that. He just, I, I, I influenced the Scientology behind him, sorry. Sorry. And no offense to anybody, but if you're into Scientology, you're fucked up. Sorry. I just, you know, he got, Danny Masterson got the 40 years, and he, I believe he deserves it. I read over the cases, and, and, and these women were believable. The ones in Nick Carter's case are not believable. So, his side too. I'm glad these men are starting to step up because so many men have been uh, accused of uh, revengeful type of uh, he touched me, he did this, when there was nothing. And it seems like they automatically believe the woman right off the bat. Same in domestic violence cases. They kind of automatically believe the woman. You know, and a lot of times, you know, I tell you, in my case, I have one and I've spoke about this before. And she, God bless my twin's mother. She died of a heroin overdose. But her thing, this was her thing, and it took me a while to catch on to it. Right? It seemed like on, on Fridays, there was a couple times on Fridays. And this would be a Friday. I'll give you an example. One time, I'm sitting in her house. We had a real nice house. Come home from work. You know, she had me something to eat. Her name is Heather. She had me something to eat ready. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I went ahead and reheated it. Microwave sat down in front of the TV after work. And she was off down in the basement doing something. 
You know, and I'm sitting there eating and watching TV, and here come the police to the door. <laughs> and I, I open the door because I don't know what's going on. They pull me out and arrest me. Right? Because she said I put my hands on her. She said we were arguing, I put my hands on her, and that's not the case. Right? So they would take me to jail. Right? And if you go in on Friday, you can't bond out or OR out until you see the judge on Monday. Right? So that would give her the whole weekend to be out in my car, spending my money, out whoring. Right? And then when Monday come along, they OR me out, and then she would just not show up to court and get I would get the charges dropped. Right? And then she would work it out with me. Oh, I was just, you know, oh, I was, I was hallucinating, blah, blah, blah. But it took me a couple Fridays, a couple of Fridays to figure out what she was doing, right? She was just trying to get, get rid of me for the weekend, right? So the very last, one, the last time she did that, she was, she was, actually she was trying to leave me in my car and she was drunk. And we were out in the front yard. And she had my keys and was trying to get to my car. And I snatched my keys out of her hand so she couldn't drive drunk. All right? Well, she called the cops and said that I was hitting her and everything else, which I wasn't. I hadn't touched her. I just told her, you ain't going nowhere in my car. They took me to jail for domestic violence on that. All right? They let her go, drunk. They let her go. She went to the cops to leave. And then she tore up my car and blah, blah, blah. But at any rate... Her plan was not to show up in court again, just so I could get out. And I told the judge, he said, well, we're going to dismiss the case because, you know, uh, you, know you have a right for your... And I said, no, 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 don't dismiss it. And he goes, well, you understand, you know, if you dis- if you know, you could dismiss this right now. He said, I said, no, I'm tired of her doing this to me, Your Honor. I said, I want to plead guilty to the charges. He goes, did you do... Did you aggressively? And I said, no, I didn't. I said, but I want to plead guilty to the charges because I'm going to break this cycle today. I'm breaking this cycle. So he had no choice but to find me guilty of domestic violence and sentence me to six months in our county workhouse. Six months. Right? So the first thing I did when I got to that workhouse is to have you fill out a, a, a list of who you want to come see you, who you want to mail you, and who you want to on your call list. If this person is not on your mail, your call, or your visiting, you don't have to see from them, see them, or hear from them. So I put her on that list. And, and, yeah, at first I got, why did you, you plead guilty, blah, 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 why did you do that? Because I wanted to be done with her doing this shit to me. So for six months, you know, because I, I cared about her a lot. So for six months, I focused on getting myself over this chick. All right? I didn't see her. Didn't hear from her, you know, for uh, for that whole time, just about. You know, it, it took about two or three weeks to get her on the li- off the, off my list. But when, by the time I got out, I was over her. Nothing she had. She had no power over me whatsoever. None. So when are we getting back together, we're not. Well, I need you to help me with this. No. When can I see you? Can we go fuck? No. I got over her in that six months. But see. I can see some of these women that are doing this to, to, to Nick. I, mean, I went through it with one, but it wasn't rape. It was assault. But uh, I don't buy this that's going on with Nick Carter. I, I don't buy it, and I think he's going to come out ahead, and I hope he gets in touch with Johnny Depp. I really do. Thanks to these uh, men that are standing up for you know, I know there's a lot of women that are sexually assaulted and raped, and, and there's men too that don't say anything ever. And these are not the people that I'm talking about here.